In conclusion, the mission observed that the pre-election and voting phases on 23rd to the 24th August 2023 harmonized elections were peaceful and calm. However, for reasons outlined above in this report, the mission noted that some aspects of the harmonized elections fell short of the requirements of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the Electoral Act, and the SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections of 2021. The mission commends the people of Zimbabwe for maintaining a peaceful political environment during the pre-election period and on voting day itself. The mission will release its final report after the validation and proclamation of final results as provided for in the SADC principles and guidelines governing electro uh, democratic elections. The final report will be shared with, with the ZEC and all stakeholders. In terms of the SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections, our long-term observers will remain on the ground to continue with the post-election observation until the 1st of September 2023. The SEAC shall return at an appropriate time to undertake a post-election review to determine the extent to which the recommendations of SEAL have been implemented and the nature of the support, if any, that the member state holding elections may require from SADC region to implement these proposals. In the event of any electoral disputes, the mission appeals to all contestants to channel their concerns through established legal procedures and processes. The mission urges all political parties and the people of Zimbabwe and all the stakeholders to allow the ZEC to announce the final results as legally mandated. May God bless Zimbabwe. May God bless Sadiq. May God bless Africa. Merci beaucoup. Obrigado, Asante Sana, Tatenda. I thank you. Mr. Nebas Mumba, I want to remind him that our original training about Zimbabwe defense forces came from the Zambia. We were hosted in Zambia. We were hosted in Tanzania. Maybe because he is from a later day party, he can go to the archives of his country and really understand the role of Zambia in the birth of what is now the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. I want to politely remind him to go and read the history of this country before he starts castigating Zimbabwean entities. So we have no interest to go outside our mandate. So basically when you read our report, everything we have raised is supported either by the Constitution of Zimbabwe, it is supported by the Electoral Act of Zimbabwe, and it is also undergirded by the commitment that Zimbabwe has made to SADC as a member state and have agreed to be scrutinized on the basis of the guidelines that even Zimbabwe was part of in formulating. Yeah. Our goal is to authenticate the process. If the process is flawed, then the result cannot be legitimate. But the manner in which we couched our, 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 um, our conclusion is as follows, and I think I would like to end at this, because then you are able to deduce on how we view this election as Saturday. Mm. We said in our conclusion that in conclusion, the mission observed that the pre-election and voting phases on 23rd, 24th August 2023, harmonized elections were peaceful and calm. However, for reasons outlined above, the mission noted that some aspects of the harmonized elections fell short of the requirements of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the Electoral Act, and the SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections as of 2021. So basically, that is our position at this time. We are now working on our final report uh, that is going to be even more uh, clearer in terms of how we are going to investigate all the other issues that are in this report in our making of the final report.
what now needs to happen is for those who are aggrieved about this election to proceed to the courts, but also to ensure that Troika engages the Zimbabwean government to look at this report. It raises very serious issues that actually border on the credibility and the integrity of the last election. And I think that as we hand over this report to the chairman, uh, President Hakain Dechilema of the Troika, he is going to communicate with his colleagues of, of SADC and say these are the serious um, matters that were raised by our, our team in Zimbabwe. And I think President Nagagwa will have to be allowed to respond to these issues. And after that, they are going to have to decide how we proceed or how they proceed in terms of this election. But we did observe some very, very serious, serious um, omissions of what was supposed to be done. And I think that our job is to observe and to report. And we've done exactly that. We observed and reported without fear or favor. And we are glad that we're professional about it. It is like a football team. You support a, 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 a particular team and it is competing with another. You lose. I mean, how do you expect the person to say, no, it was, uh, the, the, the referee was okay, everything was okay. No. So, no, Dr. Nevers Mumba is a person of interest. Is a person of interest. There is no way he would see anything other than his interest. They are saying the elections in, in Zimbabwe was not free and fair. Because the person that they supported lost. Here in Zambia, the person who is supported together with the, those others that are in Zimbabwe won the elections. And they said the elections were was free and fair. Our president, President Akainde Ichlema, was duly elected. But I'll tell you, we had serious issues here in Zambia than what you have in, 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 in Zimbabwe. Serious issues. Serious issues which claimed people's lives. Not one person, but a number of people died. We had serious violence in this country during the 2021 general elections. We had a, a voter manipulation, serious voter manipulation in Zambia in 2021. And at the end of the day, President Daka Ndeishilema won the election. And the SADC uh, observers, they said the elections were free and unfair. So what is different if we, we had worse situation here in Zambia than what you had in Zimbabwe? How come Zambian elections was free and fair and the Zimbabwean election, which I had, which was not, of course, not free of incidences, but the incidences that we had in Zimbabwe this time around, you cannot compare them with what we had here in, Zim, in, in Zambia. We might have problems with ZANU-PF, but in Zimbabwe, you must know what is progressive and our ally is ZANU-PF. And reactionaries do not want us to say that. Uh, Nelson Chamisa and his allies are not our allies. They don't speak our language. They, 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 they are not with us in this new world order agenda of the alternative multipolar world we want to build. They are not with us. They are with uh, the, the new liberals and the liberal agenda in the world. As the ANC, we don't subscribe to that. We are anti-imperialist. So any political party that perpetuates, that perpetuates uh, the entrenchment of neocolonialism and imperialism is not our ally. It's not our ally. Our allies can be committing blunders, including the former liberation movements, but they remain our allies. Elections in Zimbabwe have over the years been tainted by claims of irregularities, voter suppression and a lack of transparency. And the elections held on the 23rd to the 24th of August were no different. That is why, Honorable Speaker, when President Denkov was the first president in SADC to congratulate MSN Nagagwa on a disputed election, it raised concern. This action by President Denkov is inconsistent with Namibia's long-standing commitment to democratic principles and human rights, both, both regionally and internationally. Moreover, moreover, Honorable Speaker, the preliminary subject observer mission report on the election came 
came to a damning conclusion that aspects of the elections fell short of the requirements of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the Electoral Act, and the static principles and guidance governing democratic elections. I therefore ask the Honorable Minister the following. Number one. Order, order, please. Can I be protected, Honorable Speaker? Uh, can I? Uh, the Prime Minister is me. Number one. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Order, order. Honest. Order, order, order. Order, order, please. Mr. Prime Minister. Can I, can I suggest? Can I suggest? Honestly, that level of noise making unacceptable will bring us down in terms of image we don't we don't need that you don't need that no honestly speaking we don't need that exactly we 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 accept we <laughs> there is always constitution of zimbabwe the electoral act and the static principles and guidance governing democratic elections Honestly, on, <laughs> please, let's have order. Let's have order, please. Number two. Number two. Please go and continue. Why? Secondly, why does why does President Dinkop and the Namibian government keep supporting autocratic and despotic regimes like the one in Zimbabwe that do not align with our democratic values? We are formally embracing the movement. As NPF, SWAPO, MPLA, ANC, Frelimo, and so on. And uh, some of the countries in the West, especially Europe, uh, want to unseat liberation movements. And uh, that is why you hear these pronouncements like that as we had now here. There is an agenda and this agenda is for all our countries so we do not rule out that in Namibia they are trying the same and uh, in South Africa they are trying the same so uh, we keep on inviting them because we are not hiding anything we are transparent we are free and we want fair elections, but we do not appreciate such kind of pronouncements. It's an attack, a direct attack on our liberation movements and on our governments and our systems. We had an election in Zimbabwe that was not marked by violence and peaceful. We now need to, to work with the Zimbabweans for the prosperity of this country, for the success of this country, because that is the success of our region. In the context of regional integration, it is important that Zimbabwe must prosper, and that possibility is there. We are opposed to any form of sanctions against countries, closing them out from trading and so on, because that impoverish the ordinary people uh, in the streets. And uh, as the African National Congress, we don't subscribe to regime change. We respect the will of the people and the sovereignty of nation states. We know what uh, imposition uh, of unilateralism has done to nation states. You can take Iraq, Afghanistan and Libya. There is absolute lawlessness there. This is not what we want here in our region. And uh, we wish Zimbabweans a peaceful and a prosperous country going into the future. And uh, if there are disputes, we respect the countries within their laws to settle any form of dispute that arise as a result of an election. If there's any observer mission that has made its own observations, it is within their right. Uh, but uh, observer missions can't impose themselves on countries and subvert democracy and undermine 
the laws that govern a country. Uh, observer mission observations can be used by a country uh, in organizing better elections going into the future. So nonetheless, we ourselves as the ANC, we send a delegation when we were invited to come to Zimbabwe to observe the election and uh, we participated in the observation of the election. So. We're not speaking from ivory towers. We talk what we know. We were here. Uh, our people were here, monitored, went around and all of that. ZANU-PF emerged victorious as declared by the electoral committee. There was opposition, it is strong, but according to the elections and the outcome, they have lost. But if there are disputes, like I said, we believe that is for Zimbabweans guided by their own constitution and their laws to settle their dispute. We are very happy. We came here to congratulate the President at, uh, Emerson Mnagagwa uh, as the elected president uh, of this country as the African National Congress. Thank you very much. America can't give anyone lecture about elections. They themselves could not settle their own disputes. Donald Trump, at some point, if you remember, not so long ago, there was a big fight and war there in the Capitol, uh, Capitol House in the United States of America. So America is not a wealth policeman. They must respect Zimbabwe's independence and they must lift the sanctions against Zimbabwe. They must respect sovereignty of states and that is what is important. As the ANC, we don't subscribe to a, a, a superpower imposing itself uh, on the democratic processes of another country. After the SADC observers had made their comments, virtually saying, as far as we are concerned, the elections were not representative of popular opinion, and submitted their report to the chair of the SADC organ, President Hichlem of Zambia, I don't know what happened after that. Because I would, I would presume that then the SADC organ would have had to study the report and make a decision or suggestion as to what is, what is to be done. I mean, you remember when the, uh, in the, after the 2008 elections, uh, which were very, very disputed, and then the second round of the presidential elections marked by a lot of violence. Uh, after that, the Zimbabwe parties agreed that really the only way to respond to this reality is that they must come together into a government of national unity. Uh, it was a response to what had happened in the elections. Uh, well, I do, as I said, that I was very directly involved in those particular processes. I've not been now in, in terms of Zimbabwe, so I can't say this is what I think should happen. But I'm saying in 2008, when the Zimbabweans themselves could see that the elections had not produced a winner, uh, the best thing to do Let's get together as Zimbabweans for five years and see what we can do together. I, and that, that kind of approach, I think, uh, if one says, uh, I'm a leader of the people of South Africa, what must inspire you is not my personal position as ANC president or president of the Republic. When they, I had to leave in 2008, it was to say, what would be in the best interest of the country? Right. The decision of the ANC was wrong. Uh, to say I'm a slave, I knew that, and I said so publicly. They based themselves on a wrong opinion expressed by a judge uh, in a court, and the Supreme Court of Appeal rebuked the judge and said he never should have never said things like that. I knew that. But in the interest of what happened to South Africa, I thought it was best that to say, let's, let's go along with this wrong decision. Uh, because not to have said no, to say I'm not going, would have created an enormous crisis. I'm just saying that I think uh, people are holding political positions. I represent, I lead the people of South Africa. I must act as a leader, same, same as the leaders of the people of Zimbabwe. Uh, what is in the best interest of Zimbabwe in a situation of this kind? That, that's, that's how I would have approached the matter.